<laughs> okay. I'm Steve Henry with Wild West Aircraft. And this is our newest Yeehaw 8, which I've been flying for a few months now uh, and liking it a lot. It's just, it's an awesome airplane. And part of what's so cool is this engine. It's a Yamaha 998T. This is actually the second one I've had in here. There is not a thing in the world wrong with the first one. Put about 80 hours on a totally stock engine. The only thing that was different was on the outside we have a bigger turbo and we have bigger injectors. Other than that, it was absolutely bone stock. Uh, I work with Hypersports in Wisconsin and Glenn, he, he does my tuning and he's just so good at it and so helpful. They're, they're just absolutely amazing. I've never had such help and such service with an engine ever in anything I've ever raced, I don't think. It, it's it's amazing. They're amazing. Glenn is fantastic. Um, this engine has been built by Hypersports. We what was what was the deal was we want to turn the power up pretty much, and the stock engine will go pretty high, especially with a bigger turbo and injectors. And uh, but when we start getting up, you know, towards 400 horsepower, the valve train can be kind of on the edge of uh, having a problem with the valve train and. We don't want that. I don't. I don't want problems. So I was like, well, let's build a head for it because they do a lot of these engines for snowmobiles, so they're very familiar with them. So we thought, okay, let's let's build a head that we're not nervous about the valve train. And then we thought, well, shoot, if we're going to do that, let's just do the whole thing. So this engine is all all built. It's got Hyper Sports rods and pistons, and you know, head bolts. The, the head's all. It's all worked over and ported and get titanium parts in there. I, I don't, I have a list of the parts, but I can't tell you every exact thing that's done to it, but it's really nice. It does, it does feel like it's got more power. It's capable of making a lot more power if we want to. I don't know that I ever really want to turn it up to its full potential because I don't ever want to get on the edge again. The whole idea wasn't so much we needed more power. It's that we really, really, really want reliability. It makes enough power. The stock one makes, I mean, 400 horsepower on this airplane, honestly, it is enough power. I, I, as much as a racer as I am, and as much as I like speed and power, I can't even imagine having more power than that on this. The three cylinder, what I've been finding out is the three cylinder doesn't seem to have to put out as much power to make as much thrust as the four cylinder did. And I think that's probably a lot to do with the gearing. The engine turns slower. The one one weakness that does these three-cylinder Yamahas do seem to have is the water pump. And uh, I had a water pump go out and Teal has had one go out. He's had two. He had the stock one go out and then uh, aftermarket one go out. So right now what I've done and I think this is going to be a really good solution is I put two electric water pumps. And these are, these are well known, they're uh, Davies Craig. They're made in Australia. And I, I, that's what I've been using now on this new engine for the last week and it's really working good. I, something, somebody would have to really make a really, really nice mechanical one for me to even want to go back to mechanical because like I can leave these pump, leave the pump running after I shut the engine down well, these turbos are liquid cooled, so that, that way it keeps pumping water through the turbo and cooling it down. That's kind of a big thing. Um, I just run on one, but I have a backup, just like our fuel pumps. We have a backup fuel pump, now we have a backup water pump. And these, I just don't think these are, um, only time will really tell, but I don't think these are prone to failing like the mechanical one. Actually that has been proven quite a bit on the snowmobiles too already. Like Hypersports, Glenn says he has not ever had a problem running an electric water pump. Whereas they have had with the mechanical. So we just, me and Teal and whoever is running these engines, we try to be just as upfront as we can be about the good and the bad so that people can make up their own mind. I, I, I really don't try to talk somebody into a certain engine 
I, I, people have to make their own mind up on their engine. That's, that's such a personal thing. When you're a, you know, flying an airplane, you, you have to trust your engine. And uh, the Yamahas have been good for me. They've, I quit using another brand because of blowing them up. And since I've gone to Yamaha, I've, it, it, I've, it's been better. I, I have never blown one up. I've never had one, I've never had one leave me stranded. So, and especially working with Hypersports has been really, really good. I got connected with Hypersports through Teal, and I'm not exactly sure how, how he got started with them, but it's like right now, I was saying, Glenn, my computer's in there, my laptop's in there hooked up right now. He's downloading logs off of my ECU, tells him everything he, he needs to know about one of these engines, and that's what's happening right now. That's... He's, he spends a lot of time with me. We won't have to spend so much time once we really get things dialed in. And uh, and like he, he works with Teal too. And Teal is staying with more stock everything. Because you can go to 275 horsepower with just stock stock. Other than the ignition. you got to change the ignition so that he can do all this tuning and fine tune it and get it just exactly like we want it for airplane use. You can see right now, I just have this little straight pipe on here. That's that's my competition setup. This V-band clamp right here, I just loosen that up, pop that off, and I have a longer one with a big muffler that it attaches down underneath of here. So when I'm just flying, I turn the power level down to the lowest level and just run on MoGas, and it's quiet and it, that's that's how I like it for just flying around, going you know, going to the hills, or if I was flying cross country or whatever. I wouldn't want it like this, making lots of noise. But for competition, it seems like people actually like the noise, and it does run better. I mean, mufflers take a little power away. These make so much power, it's like it doesn't even matter if they take a little away when you're just flying. I've worked with NR Prop, who makes this prop here for quite a few years now and, and in the last year or so I've been also working with Sensenik. There's advantages to both. Sensenik is made right here, you know, in the US. It's easy for people to just talk to them. You can just call them and talk to them. Uh, we're actually a dealer for them. They, they've made us an 82 inch, a really nice composite 82 inch that really I think is gonna be a great prop for most people flying fly these, with, especially with the stock the stock engine. This, this is an NR prop, it's 92 inches, which is pretty long prop, but you know, we can turn this motor up pretty high and, and pull it, even with quite a bit of pitch. So it makes a lot of thrust. Having the big prop disc does make more static thrust. So for a short takeoff competition, that's better. Uh, we just tried the six blade recently, just a couple days ago, and it actually pulled a little bit harder than the four blade, but it made that made the engine harder to start and I, I just I don't like that so th this is this is really close to the same thrust and it, it just has a better feel it, it accelerates quicker and it starts easier we do use the SkyTrack gearbox of course that's I don't know what else you would put on a Yamaha but it has a spread clutch but there's no freewheel on this because Teal has come up with another system in here to create friction so the spread clutch doesn't just freewheel. And I like that much better. If it doesn't blow in the wind, like parked out on the ramp and the wind blows, without, without the friction device he's got there, the prop can freewheel. And that's, that's just not even safe, you know, for a parked airplane to have the prop sitting there turning. Um, and it gives more prop braking. So when I let off the throttle, I can feel it wanting to slow the airplane down instead of with it just freewheeling, it, the airplane just keeps going and because the prop just spins fast, it doesn't try to drive back through the engine and it, does, it doesn't give you an air brake. But with this, it, it makes an air brake. When I shut the engine off with the, without that, the prop will just wind down, takes a long time to wind down. This just goes and stops. So that's really nice. That's a, that's a big improvement that Teal has done. You can still turn it, but it's got a lot of resistance. Before you could just go whoosh and spin it. Well, this, this hokey looking little bottle here, we're still kind of working on finding exactly what's the right level of oil in the gearbox. 
So it's venting a little bit, and and it doesn't take much oil to make a big mess. So I'm, whatever does vent, I'm catching in this little bottle. But um, this is not a stock turbo, or a, it's not a stock turbo or a stock header. I built the header. It's it's really heavy duty because turbo headers have a terribly rough life. So it's Schedule 10 stainless. So it's really thick. It's like an eighth inch thick, and it actually is pretty heavy, but. The turbo, you know, all this stuff has to be tough because you can't, it can't be too light. Anyway, normally there's a internal wastegate on the turbo, but we just, Glenn was just having a hard time getting what we wanted with it that way. So when I built a new header, I put this on here and we put in an external wastegate. It's a tile wastegate and, and this is also tile the the hot side of the turbo that we had to replace to get rid of the internal wastegate and, and it's working it's working wonderfully and one thing about this too I was able to do is use the v-band versus four bolts uh, the v-band is so much nicer connection so we're, we're using them wherever we can there's no more bolting things together uh, we, we build the coolant tank the motor mount on the other side, the oil tank. Uh, I pretty much built the intercooler. I got just a core and some flat metal and made the tanks on the end and did all that. Um, here's our water pumps I was talking about a little while ago, two electric water pumps. So they'll, they'll pump 21 gallons a minute, I think it is. They're just doing, just running one of them is doing a really good job of keeping it cool but they're going to be on their own separate switch. My switches should be here today. Right now I actually only have one of them going, but this is a really nice throttle assembly that one of our friends in Texas makes cuz he's putting one of these on his airplane too and that's the, that's one thing that's pretty nice that's really nice about these is there's more people involved than there was on previous Yamahas. And some really smart people that are just like this. I mean, he drew this all up in, in his computer and, and they make them and it makes it a really nice way to adapt to the throttle linkage that comes on the engine into what you want on an airplane. So things like that make it much easier than when I first started doing Yamahas. I, I should talk a little bit more about how we're doing it for the 275 horsepower. Because I like doing all this stole drag racing and, and that, I know I wanted more than 275 horsepower. So to do that, I had to make my, my header and put the turbo here. Well, the stock system, the turbo sits up here on the back of the engine. So we've made a four inch longer motor mount. And then we use the stock Yamaha header it's really nice and it puts the turbo higher it's, it's way up here instead of down here well one of the real benefits of that is you don't have to pump there, there's oil that feeds into this turbo and comes back out and it's got to go back into the engine well this is too low to flow back into the engine so I have to run an oil pump a scavenge pump but with the stock setup with the turbo up here that's not necessary at all With, with the other, with the stock turbo, my oil tank, which we build too, it goes on the other side. So the turbo is up here and I don't have to have this oil pump at all. It, it just drains right out of the turbo into the engine right here. So there, there's some really nice things about, about the stock setup. And, and those headers are really time consuming to build. They're, they're expensive. The, the stock Yamaha is way less expensive. And if you ever did have one crack, you just just it's a factory part so using using all that stock Yamaha parts I think is going to be a real advantage for people that aren't quite as hands-on as some of us they kind of want you know something they can just bolt on and run and uh, we're actually doing that for some of our customers that bought kits from us and putting together firewall forward kits for them so it, it's going to be not entirely just bolt on but you, there's still going to be some things they have to do, but not much. 
one thing I just really like, there's a couple things I really like about the, the new, these new three cylinders. We can use, it was designed as a turbocharged engine. So this is stock, this is a stock Yamaha part. The injectors, the way that they attach, uh, they don't blow off, you know, with boost, that wants to blow everything off here. But since it's a factory design turbo engine, they've, all, they've got that already figured out, you know, and so they're attached good. I do add just a little bit because I'm just, I've had throttle bodies blow off before on my four cylinder and uh, you, you, your power just is gone. I mean, it still runs, but it's not something you want happening. So, and, and the other, another thing I really like about it, I already mentioned, but it's designed ground up as a turbo engine. So we don't have to take them apart and put different rods and pistons and things like that. This one has that done, but I mean, it can just go up to ridiculous horsepower if we wanted it to. But the stock one can, you know, go close to 400 it, with the other turbo and injector. So you don't have to have so much work done to your engine. You can buy a brand new engine in the crate for a reasonable cost. If we ever did need to rebuild, you know, if a guy had the stock one and needed to rebuild it, you just buy the engine. It's really not that much. It's all the other add-on stuff that you have to have that drives up the cost, but you just have to have it. Let's push this over to the other side a little bit. I'm a little bit, bit nervous, but... Are you a little nervous? A little bit. <laughs> We're going on a stall drag run with the new built-up race motor. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be exciting. 1,000. Okay, here we go.